Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I will be showing you how to de-bloat Windows 11. I did make a video like this early in the year, but I had to take it down due to copyright reasons. So I thought I'd make a new video that's a bit more in depth. Before we even start de-bloating Windows, I want to take a moment to talk about what de-bloating is and whether it's worth it. Because the answer to that question is determined by what you use your PC for and even what specs you currently have. If you just want to know how to de-bloat Windows and you don't care about knowing what it does, then I have provided timestamps for this video. Now there's many YouTubers that will make these videos claiming you can double your FPS and get zero input delay by de-bloating Windows. Now I know how easy it is to hear that and say, wow, I want to de-bloat Windows and double my FPS. But the truth about de-bloating Windows is, if you have no idea what you're doing or how to revert your changes, then you could end up with a broken operating system. And not only that, but there's no guarantee that de-bloating will even affect your performance in video games. Now I've watched countless videos over the years and what I've learned is that unless you have an extremely bloated operating system, then de-bloating Windows isn't going to affect your performance much. However, I still like to remove all the bloat within Windows as I like to keep my operating system clean and as minimal as possible. So what is de-bloating Windows? So to summarize what de-bloating Windows is, it's a process of removing unnecessary apps, disabling services and making other changes to improve the performance of your device. Now you can understand why it's easy to break Windows by doing this. If you use a de-bloating tool that doesn't actually let you control what to remove and what not to remove, then later down the line you may run into issues whilst using your PC. If a program or feature you use relies on a certain service to function and it gets disabled, you may find that you can't use it as intended. This is why I recommend that beginner users don't heavily de-bloat Windows, as depending on the de-bloating method, it can either improve performance or just simply be a nuisance and cause you issues. De-bloat Windows at your own risk, and this is why it's important to set restore points before doing any heavy tweaking or de-bloating to your operating system. Anyway, now we know what de-bloating is, let's move on with the video. Okay, so we are on a fresh installation of Windows 11, and the first thing I recommend to do is go to your settings, and go to the Windows updates and just update Windows. You don't have to update to the latest version of Windows because I know 24H2 still has issues, but just check for updates, make sure your Windows version is fully up to date. Once you've done that, head over to start up apps and just disable anything you don't need starting up within Windows. As you install your programs like your game launchers and your mouse software for example, these will start up automatically as well so you will have to come back in here. You can also go in task manager and just check that everything is disabled in there on the startup apps too. Next we'll be using Revo Uninstaller to remove all the bloat within Windows. There is a lot of programs that are pre-installed with Windows and depending on your usage you may not need these. We'll be using Revo Uninstaller Portable just because it won't actually install on our device. Head over to the file, extract it and open the Revo U port as an administrator. Once you're in here, go to the options and go to the uninstaller section and uncheck make a system restore point before uninstall. This will make this process a lot more simple and quick. Now just head over and type in create a restore point and create a new restore point before doing any of this. I will just name this before debloat, so I know exactly what the restore point is for. Once the restore point is done, I will be just uninstalled in OneDrive, which will be in the uninstaller section. All you have to do is right click on it, click uninstall, click continue, press the scan button, and then make sure all the boxes are selected and click delete and finish. This will ensure any leftover files are removed. Now you can head over to the Windows apps. So depending on what you use your PC for, you may want to keep some of the things that I'm removing. Things like Copilot, the Get Help section, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft News, Office, all these things are stuff I do not use. You may use them, so don't remove them if you do, but just go through here and use the exact same method we used to uninstall OneDrive and remove everything that you do not want. I will most likely speed up this process because it does take a few minutes, but just use the start on this part to guide you on how to do it. 
Now one thing to note is if you play any games that require the Xbox services, do not remove these. I've shown an example by leaving the Xbox, Xbox Identity Provider and the Xbox Live apps pre-installed as this is what you will need to do if you play certain games. Now the next thing I recommend doing is heading over to Google and search for auto runs. You can download a list from the Microsoft website. Auto runs is basically just a little program that's going to let you uncheck certain apps or programs from automatically starting up Windows. Because we're on a fresh Windows installation, there's not really much for us to do in here. But as you install your softwares like your mouse software, Discord, anything that you're going to be using, you can come back in here later and uncheck them from starting up. Be careful what you uncheck in here because if you uncheck a Windows service that is needed to start up with Windows, you could run into a lot of issues. So only uncheck boxes for certain apps you know Windows does not need to function. Okay, the next tool we'll be using is One Tool for Everything by Chris Titus Tech. Just copy the code on his website, I'll leave a link in the description. Head over to Windows PowerShell and run as administrator. Once you're in here, paste the code in and hit enter. Now there's actually a lot inside of this tool that we can be doing, but because we're only focusing on debloating, I will mainly be showing you the tweak section. Now if all you want to do is debloat Windows, you can just set services to manual, you can debloat Edge, and you can disable background apps which is found in the advanced tweak section. Alternatively, you can just select standard at the top of the screen, and this will do all the standard tweaks that Chris recommends. Once you've selected all the tweaks you want, you can hit the run tweak section and just wait until it says tweaks are finished and once that's done you can close out of this software. Now there is two additional programs I will show and they will lower your background processes a little bit more but this is going into more of the advanced tweaking section now. If you want to pause here and just stop at the tools and methods we've used already, you will already have a fairly debloated Windows. But if you want to debloat Windows even more, you can follow the next two steps as well. The next tool we'll be using is Windows 11 Debloat by Raphael. You can get this on the GitHub page. As I said, I will leave links to every single tool that we use. Once you extract the Windows 11 Debloat Master, you can just open the file and then select run. Now this script will ask you exactly what you want to do. You can press one for default mode, which is apply the default settings. There is a custom mode where you can modify the script to your needs. And there is an app removal mode, which you can just select and remove apps that you do not need. For this example, we will be using the default mode. So we'll just press one. And then it will just give us a brief explanation of what's going to be changed. We then just have to hit enter and it will start to remove all the services. Once that's done, it will say script completed successfully and then you can just close out of here. So the next tool we'll be using is XD Anti-Spy. This is a new tool that I found and it seems to have very good feedback on it. Now I'm downloading this from TechSpot. You can download it from GitHub, but unfortunately I had issues trying to run the program. So just head over to the downloads button and download it. You can then extract the file and then you can run the XD Anti-Spy.exe application file. Now inside of here, it's completely up to you how you customize this. There will be things already selected for you. And the only additional thing that I actually disabled was the fax printer service. Now, as I said, there's a bunch more stuff you can do in here. But once again, only start tweaking additional things if you know exactly what they do. But once you've selected everything you want to disable or remove, you can then just hit the apply settings button. And close out of this software. Here are the results after debloating Windows. We have actually dropped down over half the processes. We've removed all the apps we no longer need and Windows is fully debloated. I hope this video helped you guys out and I'll see you all soon.